And I was going to say my rave on the treaty framework for news media published by New Zealand On Air. No, I think my legitimate and strongly held concerns about what's happening to news media in this country and the level of propaganda being promulgated by government agencies in Wellington and uh, woke um, academics from places like Massey and Auckland University. But we will come back to that um, because right now our next uh, interview uh, concerns... Boy, something that got a, a lot of coverage yesterday, and well, it should, as uh, in case you're living under a rock, we're heading for a recession this year. Um, as a variety of factors come together to create, well, a perfect storm uh, for a rocky economic ride. Uh, one of the indicators of how rocky that ride might be, or expectations about it, is business confidence. And NZIER, one of the country's uh, uh, leading uh, economic research institutes, uh, has come up uh, with its business confidence survey, or came up with it yesterday, which has some pretty shocking uh, results. Uh, and to discuss them further, we're joined uh, by uh, Christina Leong, the principal NZIER economist. Christina, welcome to the platform. Thank you very much for joining us. Good morning. Thanks for having me on your show. All right. Now, this is something you do every year, the, this, this confidence survey. Can you walk us through how comprehensive it is and the basic methodology? So uh, every quarter we survey around a thousand businesses on a wide range of things across the key sectors and regions. On a so we ask businesses things such as how they're feeling about general economic conditions over the coming months, what they're seeing in regards to demand in their own business, uh, in terms of what they're doing with hiring and what they intend to do in the next quarter, uh, what they intend to do with business investment, um, what they're seeing with costs and what they, and prices. So it gives us a good gauge on firstly um, what happened in the quarter of last year, but then also looking ahead what their expectations are, both for their own business and for the general economy. All right, Christina, give us the headlines. What sticks out? Yep. So um, first and foremost, on a seasonally adjusted basis, the fact that a net 73% of businesses are expecting an, a deterioration in general economic mm. conditions over the coming months. Now, that's the weakest over the history of our survey. Which How long's the history of the survey? Yep, it goes back to 1970 for this measure. So it's Whoa. pretty weak conditions in terms of what this how businesses are feeling. Now, when it comes to demand in their own business, the our, our um, the domestic trading activity measure, a net 13 percent of firms are uh, reported a decline in activity in the December quarter. So that's the weakest since the June 2020 uh, quarter, which is when the full impact of the first COVID-19 lockdown. Uh, was captured that impact so it's overall pretty grim conditions yeah uh, how reliable are the predictions of your surveys yep so if you look at the um firstly those two measures uh you'll see that uh over the history uh headline business confidence tends to be much more volatile than the yeah. domestic trading activity measure now that's not surprising given um confidence generally when you ask businesses how they're feeling um there would tend to be a lot more um uh, changes from quarter to quarter. Um, when it comes to dom own domestic trading activity, that is a fairly good indicator of what's going to happen. In, uh, well, firstly, uh, what happened in activity in that quarter that was surveyed, um, but then also looking ahead. Um, over the past three years, the physical constraints of the COVID-19 lockdown yeah. have thrown those relationships out of whack a bit just with the um, huge volatility that we would have seen in GDP figures given that um, those lockdowns. Yeah. Um, Christina, so we're in this post-COVID thing, we got inflation or maybe even stagflation uh, looming. Is there a feeling or does your survey or the comments you get from those your survey reflect who they might blame for this or what they consider the biggest factors um, contributing to their pessimism? So this survey was taken from the 28th of November um, mm. of last year. It does follow the more hawkish than expected November monetary policy statement in That's which right. the Reserve Bank yeah. had indicated that it would take interest rates higher than initially expected. So it does seem to be the case that the spectre of high interest rates um, is spooking businesses with the fact that um, when it comes to uh, things such as when, uh, more caution when it comes to hiring and investment, particularly with hiring, we look 
it, there are signs of that turnaround. Now, we've seen very strong employment demand over, in recent years, yeah. but in this, the final quarter of last year, a net 2% of businesses are reduced staff numbers. So it does look to be the case that businesses are starting to become more cautious um, when it comes to hiring. That said, though, labour shortages do remain quite acute. Um, the fact that 38% of businesses report finding labour as the primary constraint on their business, so that's still the top primary yeah. constraint. Yeah, that's is. interesting. Um, yeah, and the mm. fact that with uh, that difficulty in finding both skilled and unskilled labour, those still remain at very acute levels. So overall, these labour market indicators point to uh, employment demand slowing, but with wage inflation likely to persist just with those labour shortages still um, in place. Yeah. Uh, Christina, what is the timeline of the prediction that you ask businesses for? How long yep. do they think, are yes. they pessimistic about? Because that's important too. Mm. <laughs> so um, it asks, oh, the, uh, there are a wide range of questions. So when it comes to the headline business confidence, we ask businesses how they're feeling about general economic conditions over the coming six months. Six months now, right. when it comes to that domestic trading activity measure, mm. it, they, um, we ask businesses firstly what they saw in regards to activity um, in their own business in the past quarter. So for this survey, it would be for the December quarter of last year, and then also for the next quarter. So that would be heading into um, this year, 2023, that first quarter there. So um, a wide range of questions and generally we ask businesses what they've um, done and or seen in the uh, past quarter and what they're expecting for the next quarter. Right, okay. All right, so it's not a, a never-ending um, sort of doldrums that, that the businesses are talking about. I just want to go back to, you know, net confidence, the lowest it's been since the survey started in 1970. And I was just, mm. sort of before my cognitive time, I think I was six years old, um, what was happening in 1970 that had us down in the dumps? No, so this is more saying that our survey, the measure for this, yeah. um, began in 1970, not okay. that back then things were quite that dire. <laughs> All right, okay. So what is the most recent, if we were going to go back, you know, after the last 10, 15 years, what's the most recent comparable level or low level of business confidence? Mm, so if you look at um, over the history of the uh, survey, we are looking back at um, times that are around levels that we saw um, in 2009, yeah. like off, uh, just uh, with the GFC. Um, yeah. A lot of that uncertainty there creeping into businesses in terms of, I've, I would say when it comes to headline business confidence, uncertainty plays a large part in that. Um, when businesses, there are a lot of factors that are still up in the air, then it makes it very hard for businesses to plan ahead. Yeah. Also, is it not true that often these prophecies become self-fulfilling that, you know, we, you know, Roosevelt's old line, we have nothing to fear but fear itself. Um, and we've got a Reserve Bank governor jawboning up expectations of inflation, saying he's almost going to create a recession. It's pretty hard to be confident under those conditions, isn't it? So the Reserve Bank is looking to bring inflation down by um, indicating that it's going to increase interest rates by quite a fair bit. It's certainly in the November monetary policy statement by a, a quite a bit more than markets and them themselves had initially um, indicated. Uh, so it looks to be the case that this, um, these expectations of quite a rapid increase in interest rates is causing a lot of concern about what it's are going to be doing to demand. Certainly, when we look at the building and retail sectors, which are were the most downbeat of the sector surveyed um, in, the, in that final quarter of last year, um, there are already signs of that um, softening in demand and concerns about uh, the outlook ahead when it comes to what sales will be doing. And also, the, um, with the retailers and building sector firms, they're continuing to face intense cost pressures, but with that softer demand limiting the ability for them these firms to pass uh, them on to customers by raising prices. So overall, um, with that uh, expectation of high interest rates, it does look pe to be the dominating factor behind um, that weaker yeah. business confidence. Okay, so price and money, uh, as always. Christina, thank you so much. You've been super informative and, and well briefed. Uh, I take it the next survey out in three months. 
Yes, thank you. All right, we look forward to talking to you then. That's Christina Leong from uh, Principal Economist for the New Zealand Institute of Economic Research. So, yep. Adrian Orr, you wanted to get us all down in the dumps. You've done your job, mate. Um, the lowest net confidence in the economy among surveyed businesses since um, NZIER started in 1970. Last time things were anywhere near this bad, 2009, sort of the hangover from the GFC, and domestic trading um, expectations haven't been this bad since 2020, really since the start of COVID. That's the takeaway from the NZ. IER survey and hardly one would say great news for Grant Robertson and the Labour caucus as they go into retreat I think tomorrow in Napier National Party are in Napier too I don't know what Napier has done to, to deserve two caucus retreats and over the same uh, week and weekend um, but good on them, it'll all be go um, make money while, it's, while the hay's the sun shines in Napier if you're a coffee person, a retailer. Maybe if you run a bar, you might do quite good business over the next few days.